Welcome back. All this week, Jojo Chinto has been telling us about the history and achievements of African-Canadian athletes. Tonight in part three of his series, a brother and sister whose success on the track continues to pave the way for others. I really did enjoy running, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful sensation to, to feel free, and I think that's one thing that running gives you. Harry was well known for all kinds of reasons by the time uh, I got to know him. The world record holder at age 19. The image that my uncle presented, it wasn't simply about being visible. It was about having dignity. Once he was on the track, he could just compete person to person. African Canadians, Harry and Valerie Jerome, children of a railway porter, took Canadian track and field by storm in 1959 at the Pan American Games. The Canadian cultures entered me in the 60, the 100, the long jump, the high jump, and the relay. I guess the 100 was my favorite. They were dubbed the Flying Jeromes. People forget how revolutionary it was for a black person to make an impression in amateur sport in the 60s. They absolutely raised the profile of the communities they came from. My uncle changed how people looked at black people in Canada. There's no doubt about that. Everyone loves a winner, and Canadians are no different. The country was nuts about the Jeromes, but the love affair wouldn't last. In 1960, at the Rome Olympics, Harry Jerome, just turned 20, would suffer a career-ending injury. He tore up his hamstrings, withdrawing from the 100-meter event. I called him a quitter. In 62, before he went to those Commonwealth Games in, in Perth, Australia, where he was injured um, and had the subsequent uh, surgery, um, every second word in this article refers to our color. Canadian columnists were rooting for Harry to lose because, as they put it, this arrogant, dusky boy acting as though he was entitled to be on the track. Words reminiscent of another time when another member of the Jerome clan represented Canada at the Olympics. Grandfather John Armstrong Howard, they call him Ami for short. Now, Ami was a sprinter, just like his grandchildren. He was a member of the Canadian Olympic team in 1912. Now, because he was black, the Winnipeg resident traveled to Stockholm in separate quarters. But that's not what the media wrote about. They describe him in, ex with exactly the same words they used to describe his grandson 50 years later, this arrogant, dusky, truculent boy. He beat uh, all of the American competition. He traveled abroad. He was endlessly harassed. First day of school in North Vancouver, we were stoned off the school grounds. There had been, by the school, not just one or two people. The kids were there waiting for us. There had been a petition in the neighborhood in North Vancouver to prevent us moving in. Valerie quit running at 20, but Harry would continue for another decade. He recovered from his injury, came back and set more records running faster each time he competed. In 1982, at the age of 42, Harry Jerome passed away. If you'd like to learn more about the Jeromes and all the other incredible athletes we're featuring this week, JoJo's series is based on Bill Humber's book, A Sporting Chance. It's available through Natural Heritage Books. Gordon.